in the beginning, there was only math. Welcome to Math Time with Professor Prime. And I am your host as always, Professor Prime. <laughs> Welcome back. So, I want to talk about my journey through math, my journey with math. Um, and I've talked about bits and pieces of it throughout my videos, and I know I'll continue to do so in the future. But I wanted to take like um, a big picture of where I'm at right now, or what led up to that. And yes, where I'm at right now. There's a better way to say that. But anyway, let's begin. So. I want to say what, that I remember when I first started doing math. The truth is I don't. I don't remember when I learned to do math. I don't remember when I learned to read or write. It's just one of those things where it happened, right? And I wasn't conscious enough to realize when it happened. So I'll start it like this. I was born a natural mathematician, as were you. Now, when it comes to math and academic sense, I don't remember learning the beginnings of that, but I remember bits and pieces, and then in second grade, I remember some pretty clear stuff from that. We had a lot of fun. You know, we did a lot of games. Um, my favorite was Around the World. And I was a beast at that game. And throughout elementary school in general, I remember math being fun. I remember people going out of their way to make it concrete for you. They wanted you to have fun. And it's the same with a lot of other subjects, but I find it interesting that um, I noticed a shift when I got to middle school. So for middle school, I still had fun, but I noticed that was no longer a big thing. It was a shift and I didn't have an appreciation for how big of a shift it was. At least not then. But I noticed that it shifted. As did many others. Now, I still had fun in class, and they still maybe did a thing here or there, but uh, once we got to algebra, it was a very, very different feel. I know I had fun with it, and it was mind-blowing to me, but I know a lot of people at the time and now that did not have that same experience. I know a lot of people before then didn't either. And I get why that is. Because the truth of the matter is, even though I had fun with algebra and that introduction into that world, the truth is we aren't always given a reason for it. You know, it's just like we're expected to learn it. So they went from being concrete and trying to get us to understand why this is important, how it works and how it functions, to just um, expecting you to want to know this. Now with someone like me, who just dig dug that sort of thing, it was fine. But I still asked why this or that happened, you know? But a lot of other people, they didn't have that same fun with it, and I personally can't blame them. Now, throughout it, I also did stuff outside of it. And I also had an itch. When I was in elementary school, my mom started teaching me algebra, so by the time I got to, like, um, middle school, and that, uh, that idea was, like, reintroduced, and we started learning even more with it, it wasn't wholly new for me. I just had more context for it. So I had an itch. Not everyone has that. That's important to note. So I had an itch. I just naturally liked that sort of thing. And I played games outside of um, class because like, uh, at a certain point we didn't have them anymore. I played things like 24, even went to a competition with that. And that was pretty cool. Um, I made it as far as like a semifinals and I have a savings bond from that competition that um, will be fully mature in 10 years, when I'm 43, which is a prime number, by the way. Awesome. Um, but <laughs> So let's go to high school. High school, I'm still having fun. Um, I get to Calc, and that's where things got really interesting. That's where things changed. Like, my mind was blown. It changed me forever. Like, <laughs> but seriously, it, it did. Um, and it was fascinating to me. Uh, and in high school, 
all we had was up to Calc 1 because with Calc 2, we needed to do a little bit more legwork. We had to have enough people. We had to have a woman teacher. We had to have a lot of things, and unfortunately, we didn't. So the closest I got my senior year was economics. It was not bad. There was a lot of math in it, but it wasn't all that I wanted. I wanted to take it even further, and we just didn't go far enough with the math in it. So I get to college, right? Oh, I turned off my lightsaber. That's unfortunate. Okay. But <laughs> I get to college. And I actually was convinced by my mom to, like, uh, take an easier class. So I redid pre-calc and uh, since, you know, I wanted a refresher with the material and it made sense. Um, so I ended up doing that. And, you know, getting that college experience and then, like, retaking calc. Um, in the college context and for the record even though we covered a lot in high school there was definitely stuff that we did not um, so it was good to retake that and then I had Calc 2 there and that was my first introduction to Calc 2 period and uh, my first introduction to a series which were like a weird concept so at this point um, they're still going okay um, and then you know I got to Calc 3 and it didn't go well for a while and I couldn't figure out why um now part of it was just you know studying habits part of it was I was overworking myself I like totally ignored what my advisor said for me for classes and I did suffer for that but one of the big things with Calc 3 and that same advisor who is awesome by the way like uh, pointed it out that my handwriting was an issue and not every teacher was going to read that um, and once I like wrote a little meter, it wasn't a problem, but for the record, um, that was actually tough for me, uh, cause I have issues with my hands, like my nerves and I actually did, um, have accommodations going, I'm sorry, from, um, elementary, middle and high school, but, um, I didn't really choose to pursue that cause I hadn't really used that in years, even though I had it, um, for college, but in retrospect, I absolutely should have because like it took me a longer time to write things out and as a result um, the good news was like it was neat and it could be read but like I couldn't complete the whole test so like having more time wasn't a bad idea so if you do have accommodations please use them they're there for a reason and um, so I had that difficulty but the other thing was, was again like I was overworked and just not focus on my studies how I should so I began to suffer with that. So I had a, like difficulty with like that, DPQ and linear algebra because I was kind of like having them all in the mix and I had discrete structures as well. And I gotta tell you, having all four of those was a horrible idea. I was told it was a horrible idea going in and in execution, yes, because I, at the time, one, it was a lot of homework. Two, I didn't really know how to study. Never had to. Um, so what I did though is that following semester, I started making up for that and um, I was on the right track and, and then I got to real analysis and that posed an actual honest to God challenge because it wasn't like just, oh, I wasn't studying enough or oh, some teacher just wasn't reading my handwriting. No, it was more than that. It was a conceptual like nightmare and at the same time, fundamentally interesting. Um, and it was kind of like what a lot of people experience with um, when they do algebra. It's a new level of abstraction. And it was annoying and it was difficult and I had to retake that class twice, mind you, because like it was taught very differently each time, but I picked up a lot and as a result, I became really comfortable with material and I was learning things that other people weren't because I had uh, three very different perspectives and I finally got my act together. <laughs> Um, and I didn't quit my major because I was like, I was very into that. Um, and so, yeah, I've retaken classes before when I didn't do what I was supposed to or I had a real challenge. And so by the time I realized it, um, how to do this, it wasn't too late for me. Because the first time, it just wasn't great. The second time, I realized more of what I was doing too late. And by the third time... I was able to do things how I was supposed to do it. And each of those times, like I said, I got different perspectives. So even though I didn't have great experiences with that class at first, and um, again and again, 
it ultimately made me better, if that makes sense. Or rather, through those difficulties, I got better. And so when I had the sequel to that class, which was like Real Analysis 2, which was just like that, but like way, way more. And um, I handled that and I handled that well. And I handled like most of my math classes with the exception of numerical analysis, way, way better than that. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, with numerical analysis, that's the only one that I had issues with after um, real analysis. But it was a bit of a roller coaster through college. And I do think I came out like better for it because once I got my act together once I was getting better grades and getting better grades across the board I was able to do some research like um in that senior year and that was nice and I was already done with like all of the uh, math credits so I was able to like kind of fool around take some extra math classes along the way and I just kept on finding classes that blew my mind because like real analysis, even though I had difficulty with it, it still blew my mind. Real analysis too, way more so. Like that changed me in a fundamental way. And then dynamical systems, I came across that, and that was the same thing. And I think that's like a pretty cool lightsaber. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I eventually got through college. Uh, it was a rocky road for like a few years, and I got myself together, and I became a much better mathematician leaving it than I was going in. Because not only did I um, finally figure out how to study, but one of the cool things was that, yeah, so there was a couple classes that I had struggled with here and there, but when there was other people in those classes, right, like I got to talk to them so they could avoid the same pitfalls that I did. I got to know the ins and outs of what will take you down a bad path, you know? And that made me stronger in my abilities too. It always has, and I would lead, um, study groups and stuff like that um and if i didn't lead them i'd be there like to give some unique perspective and to just like warn people about certain classes and when i was done with college i did not have a plan and so and it was also like tough times because it was like during the recession like uh like oh dear god uh, <laughs> 10 years ago or so um so that was rough, but um, I would do math periodically to like, keep myself fresh. And that ended up being really cool. And um, there was like uh, one year I was working at a hospital and I got like some experience um, just with random conversation and just how crazy that could really go. Cause you know, you always have an impact, but sometimes it's lost on us just how crazy and far that reaches. And um, I'd be in the lobby doing my problems at three in the morning because at the time I didn't have a car. Um, and it was cool to have people ask what I was doing and have those conversations and get them thinking. And then eventually I broke into my field um, and that was cool. I did a lot of stuff behind the scenes, like, you know, creating assessments um creating notes and things like that and then i actually broke in with the teaching side and so i was doing all of that for a while and then like i'm um, running a math and science tutoring center at some point throughout all that at some point i was doing all the positions and it was crazy and i don't recommend that sort of thing but in teaching math that made me even better at it because yes when i came in i was competent at explaining it right you know i'd already done all that stuff and that's fine but if you really, really take teaching seriously, you're gonna find that it makes you even better at what you do because you have to find all these different ways to explain things to people. You have to think about the subject methodically. You have to think about it in a way that you didn't before. And I was already primed to do that because I had done like a lot of tutoring at that point. But throughout my journeys, it made me think about math in a very different way. It made me realize that, um, you know, we're doing writing when we're solving that problem. We're making statements. We're saying something. We're doing communication. And that went on to shape me in some big ways. And as I've gotten older, it's taken me to a point where 
I really do believe we are all natural mathematicians. Math isn't something that we invented. It's something that we naturally do. The math in academic sense is taking what we naturally do and trying to like, uh, you know, describe it more, trying to give us a better way to communicate something about the universe and the processes within it. And so I think that sort of stuff is interesting. And I learned a lot in education um, and like teaching and being like both the teacher and the support. And that uh, that was always uh, cool with me. And so now I've, um, you know, switched gears a little. I've taken up some new work and for keeping the math alive, I do stuff with this channel. Um, I update the, my site um, periodically and I'll be updating, you know, more in the future. And I'll be writing a killer math book that is not going to be like anything that anyone else has ever seen before, which is a powerful statement, but I maintain it. So even though I had to switch gears a little bit and mix things up, I still do math in my personal life, which actually works better for me because like doing it professionally, I cared way too much and I was the cost, which is unacceptable. So switching it up and working in like, you know, a different field allows me to enjoy my math more personally while getting to do more of it on my own terms. Like by having these sort of conversations, by writing the book that I'm writing, by having my site where I have a lot of resources and a lot of things that help you, not just with the math resources, but studying in general. And I can put everything together, have things in multiple places to all push towards uh, the future, you know? And getting the word out about math the way I wanna get it out because I don't think a lot of people are having the kind of conversations that I'm having about math and I think when I like tend to talk to people and I talk about like for instance the math and writing people get it because that's what it is but they were never taught that before and that's something that I'd like to see become different I want to see things change and I will continue to do work in that but this video got like super long and <laughs> I'm gonna call it so that's uh, been my math journey up until this point. There's a lot that happened, a whole lot, but I don't regret any of it. I've become a better mathematician um, in many, many ways. And like I said, we're all born natural mathematicians and what we learn in school, that's just a way to expand that, a way for us to use what we know in a way that should benefit us all. So instead of being something that frightens us, it should be something that empowers us. And I personally want to see people change their view about it. I want them to be empowered by math. I don't want them to fear it. Because it belongs to them as it belongs to me. It is the universe is how the universe functions. It isn't all of us, it is all of us. I am math, you are math. <laughs> Seriously speaking though, um, I want people to know that they can do math, like the math that we're traditionally used to doing. Everyone has that capability. Don't let anyone tell you anything differently with that. So yeah, oh my God, it's still going. <laughs> okay, I'll see you on the next one. Professor Prime out.